we're live hello everyone how are you all doing on this uh for me darkening sky on a friday um for alex brightening <laughs> yeah it's nice here we're uh, we're just digging out of winter i live in north carolina in the u.s and uh it's it's pollen season, so the allergies are in full effect. If I sound downtrodden season. at all, <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. I mean, we have that in the UK, but I've I've managed to stave off having any kind of pollen allergy. Um, this was actually I, a white hoodie before I walked outside this morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. Hopefully you can see us. Just let us know in the the comments if you can see us and everything sounds good um but yeah i'm i'm rosie i'm the comms manager as i said last week wish i had a slightly sexier title realize it sounds really officey but uh i'm a talky person <laughs> for carbon alchemy and uh this week we don't have peter vaughan because he's still traveling around and enjoying well he's now in thailand um, so he's been sending us pictures of food and drink, making us all jealous in the team. Um, so actually last week we had Peter C. Hayward, who is half of the team that designed Critic Kitchen. And I'm a completionist, so I decided to collect both. And now we have Alex Cutler, the other half of, what do you call yourself? Like a dream duo? Like, is there like a little, little name? Uh... No, just co-designers. Yeah, I like I like Dream Duo. We might start using that. It seems a little presumptive, but I like it. Dream Team. Yeah, got to catch them all. Exactly. You've got to get all the designers together. And if we aren't board gamers, if we aren't completionists, um, so <laughs> it's, it's very true. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna have there is gonna be a little game today, which I'm gonna put Alex through, but all of you as well. So I'm um, hopefully you're gonna enjoy that. Uh, and spoiler it is Critic Kitchen themed. So if you look back in your mind when, <laughs> just so you know, your typing is a little bit loud, just so you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you look back in your mind to November last year and think about all the different Critic Kitchen things, then uh, yeah, you can figure out the answers to these questions, hopefully. You'll probably be fine. Um, okay, so uh, Alex, you're good? I don't know. I don't know if he's having any uh, issues with hearing me or not. Let me find out what's going on. Oh, your internet might be having issues. Can you hear me now? Hello? Let me know which one might be freezing, if it's me or if it's Alex in the audience, in the comments. You're fine for me. <laughs> um... Just gonna message him. Anyone? Oh, okay. I was gonna keep talking. Let me know in the comment. In let me know in the comments if, if who's who's glitching. Neither are freezing, so maybe it's just him. <laughs> um, I'm good. That's for once. No worries. Yeah, I, I for once I'm good. You know, normally it's my internet. That's why I sit in this part of my flat because I'm right by the router. Um. Yeah, he's gone off screen now. <laughs> um, I'll just uh, just gonna wait and find out what happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, Peter's been sending loads of pictures to us. He's taken all of the plushy dragons with him to take photos in different areas, which is amazing. I can't wait to make content with that so I can show you. Um, I'm just gonna like take that off so that you don't have to see a blank screen uh, but how's everyone's week been what have you been up to have you been enjoying uh playing any board games Do you have plans to play board games this weekend let me know um but yeah i'm just gonna check see if he's all right <laughs> um but yeah so i have played what did i play i unboxed some exciting kickstarters that i'm having a look at which is what I do in my spare time just for fun. Um, and I have been writing up, finishing off the recipes. And uh, we now have a winner for the desserts, which we will announce soon. Uh, so those who've been checking that out, thank you very much. Um, Ticket to Ride Legacy, Gib and Tessie has been playing. Let me see if uh, he'll share that for you. So where are you at with that, if you can spoil it? Um, I mean, don't spoil it, maybe. <laughs> I've not played it yet. I want to. Another long, stressful week. So looking forward to playing games this weekend. Lacuna is our own today. Can't wait to try it out tonight. 
that's awesome. Lacuna being the CMYK game that comes in a tube and it's like a pond. And that one, I I love it. It's really interesting and abstract. And I played it in a park and it was a little bit windy. <laughs> um, got to play Worm Span for the first time on Wednesday. I've heard some people saying they like it way more than Wingspan. And I own a lot of Wingspan. I don't know what to do. This is this is difficult. Um, so I'm going to try try and play at a board game cafe and see what I think. Try and go in with, a, with an open mind and not uh, thinking about the very large collection of Wingspan I have on my shelves. Um, you've only played three rounds of Ticket to Ride Legacy. Interesting. Um, acquired my Grail game, Trickshot 2E, and we're playing it tonight. A Grail game, that's exciting. What a Grail game is, is a game that you're... It's like top of your wish list, hard to find game. That's what that is. <laughs> Maybe four, actually. You don't know where you're at in Ticket to Ride Legacy, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to have a quick check. See how he's doing. It's clearly having having a little internet party, obviously, Alex's. Wingspan and Wingspan are different. If you like that type of game, they're different enough that you'll want to keep both of them. See, that? that's the kind of advice I tend to give people about games, but I am genuinely worried about my intake of board games. It is... It is becoming excessive. Every room has board games in it. Um, that's I'm not even joking. I think there's one in the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know why. It just ended up there when I took it out of my pocket. Um, so I need to have a think about when you're when I'm buying similar games, I need to think about what I'm getting. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't have any pictures to share from Peter yet. But he did go to lots of different factories in China to see how Andromeda's Edge is being made. And it's super interesting. I uh, I used to study mold making and I find it really fascinating how they make the minis and how we paint them. Uh, and as well as making the wood components and the paper. And it's all in different parts, which is incredible. So um, he's been getting loads of footage. I gave him like a list of stuff that I wanted him to get. Uh, I'm really excited to put it together and see what we can show you and what we can sort of reveal of this part of the process of making a board game. <laughs> if there were board games in every room, then what else would you decorate with? Well, as you can see uh, a lot, like it's, it's, it's a lot. There is, um, there's a little, little bread dragon here. I'll try and stay. This is, this is a terrible idea. There we go. Currently doing some driving. Well, be safe. <laughs> be safe. I'm just going to check on Alex, see how he's doing. Maybe he's having, like, some major internet issues. Who knows? Um, but, yeah. So, uh, I... Well, I'd love... What we're going to talk about today, hopefully, if Alex can sort this out, um, is we're going to talk about designing board games versus developing them, because Alex is... Alex Cutler, who is joining us, hopefully, is... Um, the head of development at Pandasaurus, at Pandasaurus Games, um, which are bigger than Cardboard Alchemy in terms of team size, I believe. Um, and it's just interesting to hear like how companies scale of different scales work on projects. Um, but also I have a game for you all, which if you can't come here, you can still play the game. It's fine. I have I have a little game which I made. Hopefully <laughs> it's gonna be good. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, but if anyone does have any questions that they want answered which I can answer um then feel free to ask my my categories of knowledge are vast and strange um but I uh <laughs> main thing would be that I I know social media and marketing of board games and you know the back end of what we're currently doing and what I can what I can talk about across the games that we're making um and uh yeah I I do a lot of social media and I do a lot of talking about games unsurprisingly my favorite thing to do um, it's kind of a quick check. Feel free to get your questions in. Um, if you have any questions in for me, feel free. Nice topic. I've always wondered about the details of the different roles. I mean, it's a really fascinating space to be in board gaming because it's very small, really, in the scheme of all the different industries. It is a very small one. Um, but there are so many different roles and so many sort of different ways that they can adapt and change. And that's very common in small creative teams, but it's just really, I just find it really interesting. Oh, more talk about Wormspan. Wormspan has some of the backbones as Wingspan, some of the same backbones as Wingspan. I'm just not reading right now. I'm really sorry. 
some of the same bones as wingspan, but there are significant differences as well, not unlike dwellings of Elder versus Andromeda's Edge. There can be room for both in a collection. I hope so. I hope so. Could they make like a mini one? <laughs> I hope so. Or what I'll do is I'll add it to my board game cafe collection, which is games that I play in board game cafes. Um, because uh, some games just get played more when I go to cafes. Um, so, yeah, what can you do? Um, but, yeah. So what what else can we talk about? Well, um, I have been... I have been playing the solo mode of Critter Kitchen, which is on TTS for certain people to test out and play, which is really fun. I'm really enjoying it. And it just made so much sense in my head when I was taught it. I was like, yes, this this makes so much sense. And I'm, I'm really excited to play it in person and set it up and, and, and film some of it for you guys. And I hope that lots of you all are gonna enjoy it as well. It's, it's a really fantastic thing that they've designed as a part of the game. So yeah, um, I'm just, oh there he is. Let me try and add him. Hello, can you not hear me, Alex? <laughs> I'm not. We can we can hear you, but I don't know if you can hear me. Um, let me uh, let me type in the in the in the little chat thing that we've got. Hello. <laughs> Oh, technology. So beautiful. It looks so sad. <laughs> it's very stressful when internet isn't working. Uh, maybe try using a phone. That sometimes works. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure why it's not doing that. Um, I'm just kind of waiting. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm not used to doing everything all at once. Uh, I go live all the time on my own social media, but I just sit there and waffle, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, but then I also have. Uh... He's going to try a phone. He's going to try a phone. Going to work it out. <laughs> oh, the joys of technology. That's something always goes wrong. Um, you think during an entire like pandemic where everyone was working from home, technology would have just like worked we would have very very good everything but uh no <laughs> no look at this little i put him in my hand yeah um thank you so much everyone for joining me for this uh slight technical hitch that we're experiencing um you can say that you were there when this happened which is which is great <laughs> Um, and it was all working. We did a little like thing at the beginning. Well, it's all working very smoothly. So who knows? It it could be it could be Streamyard, which is what we use. Um, but yeah, what have the team been doing? Chris Strain, who is um, the developer, I think he's developing Crit Kitchen and producing it. Um, he is working really hard on getting all the files done. As is Lauren, uh, the the other person working on it. She's working really hard and helping me make some of the stuff for the game today. <laughs> Thanks, Tessie. Thanks, Kevin Tessie. You're doing great. Keep going. Uh, I will add Alex's agent in a moment. He's just sorting out his phone. I'm going to try it out. Hello. Hello. Is this better? <laughs> yeah, it works. <laughs> no idea at all. I reset my router four times and yeah. That's really strange. Yeah. Like moving. <laughs> completely frozen video was all wonky so i don't know which i thought it was me because i was like it's usually me <laughs> no definitely me <laughs> but okay this works this works well hi alex <laughs> thanks for joining us um i've just i've just been talking about we were just gonna to say we're gonna talk about what your role is and also you do lots of different things you wear lots of different hats in your job and in your freelance job is that what you would call it your yeah, yeah. I have, I have a day job with Pandasaurus, and then I do freelance design and development. A um, little bit of everything, I guess. Yeah. It sounds incredibly busy. How do you manage that? <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> question. I don't know that I have an answer to that question. <laughs> I also have two kids. Which <laughs> you have two kids, and uh, you were very involved in the process of. Critic Kitchen on Kickstarter, which doesn't not always everyone's different relationships with designers. Sometimes I think designers will come along and go, "Here's my game, 
bye. <laughs> um, well, you know, I'm on the other side of the table a lot of times at Pandasaurus with designers we're working with. And um, most publishers, uh, Pandasaurus included, Cardboard Alchemy included, sort of say to designers, you can be as involved as you want to be. You know, how, how much do you want to stick around for this process? And I think most designers probably want to, to be involved, I would say. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's fun. Like I, I've had a great time working on Critter Kitchen. I've had a great time doing all of the streams and playing the game with folks. And you know, it's just it's a game that Peter and I are very proud of. And so I'm happy to keep being involved in, with it. I think we're going to try and get you back to play again when it's when it's done because there's lots of requests yeah. for another rematch. Uh, I genuinely think people want you to dye your hair blue. I, I think I think it's, it's coming at some point. <laughs> I, I admit it. It will happen at some point. I have to try and time it. <laughs> <laughs> I I think there are temporary options, but I looked into the process of like actually dyeing your hair blue, like what Peter does, and it is uh it's more elaborate than I realized. Oh, so. I have like sad little blonde hair from bleaching it too much, so I, I would recommend hair chalk, which is just rub it in, <laughs> and it's like non permanent. <laughs> That's what I would recommend. That's like a dark good. blue, unless you've got quite dark hair. Um, Michael has asked. Um, Said Panasaurus is based in Austin, Texas. Right. That's the question, right? Um, but you don't live there? No, I the um despite the company still being uh, registered there, uh, my bosses, the owners of the company, just moved to North Carolina. So I'm actually in the same state as them now, but neither of us are in Texas. So. <laughs> oh, how how unusual. Um just is there just like a, a sort of statue in Texas <laughs> that represents the company or uh -huh. one mailbox? <laughs> For getting mail and things. Um, I mean, they used to live in Austin, so that made yeah. sense. Um, our our company is pretty spread out. We have people in the Midwest and on the West Coast. Um, Raina, who's our media manager, uh, um, who does TikTok, and some of the people who are listening might be familiar with her channel. She uh, lives out in San Diego or LA, I think LA maybe. Um, and so we're spread out. Uh, but I think a lot of board game companies are like that. I mean, Cardboard Alchemy, you know, has. I mean, yeah. I've still not met any of the team in person. Um, we will do. By the end of this year, hopefully I'll have met everyone. That's the plan. But it's just the way these sort of, it, I think it's great when companies sort of modernize and, and change and shift because technology doesn't usually fail <laughs> in terms of being able to talk to each other. Um, and uh, we also work varying hours, but it means that we can cover like 24 hours of comms basically. Like when I'm asleep, Peter's awake. Not currently where he is, um, but usually we sort of cover everything if anything is needed or anyone's needed. Um, so the thing I really wanted to talk about was you design and you develop and you're head of development. Um, what would you say is like the major differences between being a designer and then being a developer? Like how do you get yourself into the right headspace for what you need to do? Yeah, well, so definitionally, the difference is pretty straightforward, I guess, which is if you're a designer, you're making, you're taking an idea and you're sort of bringing it 90% of the way to the finish line. And then as a developer, you're sort of doing that last 10%, which can sometimes be the last 90% in practice. <laughs> um, so it's basically just a handoff kind of break point where as a designer, usually when I, my job could end as soon as a publisher has taken it like you were saying earlier a lot of times you want to stay involved but as a developer um i'm sort of taking all the same skills that i'm using in design except i've got someone else's baby kind of so i'm trying to do right by them do right by the company you start to think about things more from a product development uh point of view so a lot of times what i'll be doing in my day job at pandasaurus is hey, we have this game that we really like, but it doesn't have a two-player mode. It's just three to five. Can we add a two-player mode? Or can we add a solo mode? Or um, And, you know, these are things that are not uh, untrue for when we were working on the development for Critter Kitchen. So uh, Peter and I and, and Chris Strain were playing a lot of games, uh, doing a lot of testing, um, you know, right up through the campaign, saying, like, hey, can we add a solo mode? Can we add a six- and seven-player mode? And, you know, those are things that people are hungry for and we're happy to try and provide. Yeah, no, it's 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 so interesting because when I when I to get like a creative project, sometimes I like to be restricted. I like to have boundaries as the space that I have to work in because I feel like I can be more creative then. And as a designer, you can kind of stretch as much as you want in some ways. 
mm-hmm. but when you're developing something there there is going to be something restricting you such as the game that already exists and that kind of stuff like that sort of thing excites me and I find that really interesting what are your favorite things about designing and your favorite things about developing mm. uh, favorite things about designing is it's really just such a sandbox you can do anything you want I, I design all types of games um, I think Peter's this way too uh, Peter Hayward. We both kind of like to do everything from quick light party games, dexterity games, all the way up through, you know, heavy three hour Euros. And um, as someone who enjoys playing a lot of board games, um, it's it's nice to kind of be able to sort of do whatever you want on any given day. It's it's very much like follow your passion kind of. Yeah. Where it's, oh, I'm feeling inspired to work on, you know, this super heavy thing, or I'm feeling inspired to, you know, flick dice around on the table and like either one of those is a perfectly valid you know path to to pursuing design uh development you're often a lot more constrained it's sort of here's what the game is and it can only move you know two percent in either direction uh from what you're starting with but that has pros and cons too right and as far as the pros go it's uh your scope is sort of um selected for you in a lot of ways um which means that you have pretty good indicators of if you're doing the right things, right? So if I get a game that's already most of the way to the finish line and I uh, add a two-player mode and it's working and it's doing all the things that a three-player mode is doing, or I'm, you know, testing a rules edge case and I, I get it fixed in a way that, you know, solves a problem, um, you usually get, like, pretty fast feedback on, hey, this is actually working, whereas design is a lot of, you know, two steps forward, one step back, yeah, or 12 steps back, you know? Um, Development is also nice because I get to have a lot of games that I've had my, you know, hands in the pie on uh, come out every year. So Pandasaurus, you know, we put out a dozen or so games last year. And of those, I probably worked on seven or eight of them. Um, I do have a couple with me. Uh, yeah. Emerge, which is really, really cool. Do you want to talk a little bit about working on this game? Um, it's such an interesting art style and theme. Um, I think it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so Emerge is a game that pan- you are sort of uh, scientist researchers, I guess, but the theme, theme is a little bit hand wavy in terms of who you are. But what you're doing is you're building these islands um, out on the board. And um, I don't know if you're able to like hold up the back of the box to like show kind of what it looks like, but uh, you, you, I always have to check if it's the, I never put boxes the right way around, but this time I actually did. Yeah, so you've got like this big board, which is the ocean, and uh, you're laying out, each player can build up to four different islands out on little volcanic vents in the middle of the Pacific. And uh, you build your islands up by layers, and you uh, then populate them with sort of food chains. So you have trees that come in, and then once you have enough trees, you can put out crab. Crabs let you put out uh, seals and things like that. And you can have birds fly back and forth to the island and drop to have new trees grow up. And... Um, the uh, the theme of it is just it's kind of like a just a charming little like make your own little ecosphere kind of thing um, and then mechanically it's a dice manipulation game so you roll a bunch of dice you put them out on the different numbers and they each let you take an action related to one of the things you can do on your island but round to round you can add in new tiles that let you sort of shift the odds towards other things you want to do so if I really wanted to go hard and Building new islands, I could add a new tile that lets me have my sixes and fours be tectonic plates or something. So um, some light dice manipulation. Um, it's it's more uh, strategic than it looks at first glance. You have a lot of control over kind of what you're doing with um, your, your pieces on the island. But um, it's a nice sort of distilled experience. I think I've never had a game, even at four players, that went that much over an hour and you're able to kind of, you know, uh, it, my wife and I played it a lot when I was developing it at, at the two player mode and we would, you know, play for half an hour and then be like, all right, well, you know, you won that one, let's play again because I want to go again. Uh, I, I mean, like, I, I like that it's it's about multiplication, isn't it, of what's on them. So it's like however tall it is times the things that are on it. Is that correct? Scoring is just whatever, however many bits you have on the island uh, times however high the island is. So, you know, it's sort of that uh, geological time scale thing of like an island. Is- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, you know, 
islands can get bigger as the volcano, you know, sort of comes up and then spreads out. So however high your island is multiplied by the stuff that's on. Um, and then they just get your score. So like the, you know, the, the scoring is very simple at the end of the game. There's a few little like uh, race goals that you're trying to be the first. Yeah. Person. Um, I, I like the birds cause they're quite mean. The birds yeah. are fun. The For birds sure. like, if they land, you can like steal, I think from other players, something you like that. Other players. Yeah. Cause if you have, if the game ends, when you have birds on your Island, you get to count them as your points, but the bird action lets you pull them away. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's that's really cool. I mean, it kind of remind the scoring reminds me of. Oh, sorry, I was just. It's not a particularly mean game, but if you want to be mean, you can be a little. Yeah. <laughs> the scoring reminds me a little bit like number nine. When you're thinking about yeah, yeah. the layers and stuff. Uh, obviously, not as like simplistically mean as like to your brain as number nine. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's really cool and uh, huge as well. I will say it's long, long boy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that's one that um, I don't. When we started out, I don't think we intended for it to be uh, quite so large. But, I mean, it, it's got great table presence. It's just you have to uh, you have to play it on like a long table. <laughs> as a as a, a London flat owner, I was uh, like filming it, going, "Ooh, do we have a long enough table for this?" And Flamecraft is also quite long, but it's just something about like this long. Yeah. Uh, the emerge board is sort of like the flamecraft flamecraft um strip yeah um one thing that it, it's not written anywhere on the box but if you're ever just playing that game with two players you don't actually really need the board you can just put tokens for two players that's it's very it's a pretty little like anchor in the middle but if you want to you can just shrink it yeah that's so that's so true um i think doug said that when so doug's the then he learns the games and then teaches me them because that's how my brain works um and uh, yeah, he was like, I don't think we need the board. Obviously for filming it, we should, but I don't think we need it. And I was like, that's very true. Uh, only with two, you're not using as much of it, are you? So, um, but yeah, no, it's really cool. Um, and another another game that, did you work on this one? Emerge. He can patrol I worked on, yeah. Oh, look, it's upside down. Isn't that fun? Every time. Oh, there you are. So cool, right there. Um, this is a game I absolutely love. If anyone likes tile placement like Carcassonne, but like solo vibes, this is this is very good and really crunchy because you're literally only able to move through the water. So when you lay tiles down, which have like land on, you could block yourself off completely. It's really, really cool. You probably do better explainer than me, but it's so pretty. <laughs> that was an interesting one because I actually, we signed that game basically... Uh, 99% of what it is in the final product. Um, we were talking earlier about like, you know, when you're developing a game, sometimes you change a lot, sometimes you change a little. That one actually the designer, uh, Torben, is also the artist for, and I had seen his sort of design journey on Twitter. He was sort of actively posting like, hey, I'm making this game. And um, for anyone out there who's like an aspirational designer, that is a great way to get eyes on your project early because I basically saw that. As, so I, I'm a developer for Pandasaurus, but I also do scouting. So, which is finding new games for us to sign and put out. And I saw it on Twitter and I was like, wow, this looks incredible. If it plays half as good as it looks, you know, that's one that we should put out. And Torben was originally thinking about self-publishing, you know, maybe going the Kickstarter route. And uh, we reached out to him and we were just like, hey, you know, we would love to partner with you on this and put this out. And, you know, once I had a chance to actually play it, it's just as good as it looks. It's, uh, it's very, and you know, uh, for your audience, right? It's a very cozy kind of game. <laughs> Got those vibes right it is and the, the it came out last year right um i think it was last year uh which is the same year as dwarf romantic yes yeah which... and a lot of um i guess experiential dna with dwarf romantic it's i think it was around it, it came out around the time that the dwarf romantic board game came out but it was so close in time that uh they, they weren't like influenced by each other i guess but i think there's a lot of cozy games out in like the zeitgeist now uh, also while we're talking if you give me one second i have to find a charger to, to plug oh, in yeah, no worries. after my internet died on my computer obviously i'm on my phone and i just got the alert that i'm at 10 percent. so Def yeah. definitely find the charger i think brad yeah. just said like a game with a long board ridiculous <laughs> right, i'm gonna just pause for one second i'll be right back as soon as i find a charger no worries. I'll just remove you. But yeah, I mean, 
if you haven't played Beacon Patrol, definitely check it out. I mean, this this is the art style, and it's got this like it's upside down as always with my games. If you can see, it's just this really beautiful sort of the colors that just oh, it's so. I love the line art, and uh, yeah, same designer and artist, which is uh, Torben Ratzlaff. I hope I'm saying that right. And it's got a Z in it. I love the name of the Z in it. Um, but it's really cool. And um, we're going to talk about something really exciting to do with this game in a second <laughs> when it comes back. Um, because of the joy of internet issues. Um, but yeah, Brad's watching, which is which is cool. Brad isn't in Thailand right now. <laughs> uh, Brad's still with us, working away. Um, but yeah, wish, wishing you were, I'm sure. Um yeah, sorry about Dobby barking. He's a uh, every time, every time I go live, he's just barks, which is so fun. Uh, but yeah, um, Emerge also is a brilliant game, and uh, I love those kind of like those sort of themes and everything as well. <laughs> Brad says I had Thai food a few nights ago, though. I really need Thai food now. I'm gonna have to have some. Um, I'm just thinking about Thai food now. I'm having a jacket potato tonight. If you know what that is. Just a big potato that you cut and put stuff in it. I don't, some places don't have them, so. <laughs> um, thumbs up if you like a jacket potato. If you don't, then, then I don't know what's going on with you there. <laughs> Are we good? Let me... <laughs> Yay! Oh, yeah. The comedy of errors. Now I get to be at an angle because this is as far as my charger cable reaches. I think it's quite dynamic, um, to be honest. It's all about framing and you've got nice sort of diagonal lines working there. Um, um, so we were just going to talk about there's something coming out to do with Beacon Patrol, if you want to say or share. We have the Ships and Shores expansion coming out uh, later this year. So um, what this is, is if you're uh, familiar with the base game, what it adds is asymmetric player powers. So everybody takes a different ship instead of the starting ship that you have. Um, and they each have sort of just a little slightly different power. So, you know, one can move a little bit further. One can sort of like hop over land. One can explore different types of things. Um, uh, one lets you move as far as you want in a straight line with a single movement point. Just all kinds of like little tiny things, but it really adds a lot to the puzzle. So once you've sort of like explored the boundaries of what the core game is, this gives you a lot of um, replayability. And um, I think I can announce this. So we've got this coming out uh, later this year. And then the plan is next year we're going to put out a single box that contains the base game and the expansion uh, for, I think, this is 15. The base game is 15. Uh, but I think we're going to try and put them both together for 20. Um, uh, and nice. that'd be the product going forward. Yeah. So does that all fit in the original box? It should, yeah. Okay. Cool. It's all about space saving in this flat. Sorry, I've got like a million um, over here on my desk. You're not supposed to. You know, that. I've got a fit Andromeda's Edge in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is the size of a small child. Um, <laughs> Um, as it should be. Uh, Brad says we're getting a slow progressive tour of your office, which uh, which is great. I think everyone has seen my whole house by now, to be honest. Uh, if you follow the Cardboard Alchemy TikTok, which you should, you've probably seen my entire flat because um, I went on a little, I did a little game for Easter. Did you celebrate egg season Easter? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got a um, one-year-old, so they are, they're big into the egg hunting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Doug and I have done uh, egg hunts for, well, not egg hunts, but like treasure hunts and stuff, like every year since we've pretty much got together. So about 10 years. Um, and uh, this time he, do you know Yeti in the house? It's a. Uh, Is that like Elf on the Shelf? No. <laughs> but I don't think it's super far off. Um, Yeti in the House is a tiny little, I, th I think I think it's a Japanese game, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and you get a little Yeti dude and you get little footprints and someone goes and hides it and takes a photo, but like a really obscure photo, and then uses footprints and takes photos of those, and then gives those photos to people trying to find them. And it's it could be like really obscure, but if it's too obscure, then, then no one's gonna win because that's silly. Um, so you've got to try and like put it in a way. So what Doug did is he got the Flamecraft meeples and he sent me a bunch of photos of where they were hidden. And then I had to try and work out where they were from. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. I had so many, so much wasted space with black water. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so he hid them and there's I did a I did a he filmed it and I did a TikTok of me just very confused um what the red thing was in in my in the flat. It's like, what's this red fluffy thing? Not realizing that it was pink and the lighting was was wrong. And I should have known because I had the red meeple in my hand already. And it was the pink. Yeah. Anyway, it was really fun. And I realized that you could pretty much use any board game meeples to oh, yeah. play this game. Um, but I do want to get Yeti in the house. It's like it's like this big, but not easy to get in the UK, unsurprisingly. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it was really fun. Um, is is a Yeti part of your local lore there, or is that more of like a? We know what a Yeti is. <laughs> it's no, not. I, I think it's, it's not really an American thing either. We have Bigfoot and like Sasquatch, which are it's like the, it's the same thing. I yeah, think. mountain Yeti. But I, I don't. I remember there was an American TV show about a Yeti or a Sasquatch. And it was a comedy. I didn't think it was very funny, <laughs> um, but it was like a, a guy in a big furry brown looked like looked like Chewbacca. I don't know. I remember that, <laughs> um, but no, it's not. It's not. We don't really have like trolls and things in our in our hall. Um, Harry and the Hendersons. It was that. That is what that show was called. <laughs> I. It was weird. Um, so uh, my yeah, we're gonna play the game now, and then we'll carry on chatting until. But the, the game, the game I've made is, and you've I've frozen for a little bit. Oh, you're good. You're good. Um, so the game I've made uh, is reminiscent of something that happened during the Pokemon era, big Pokemon era. Do you remember who's that Pokemon? Sure. Yeah. Who's that critter? <laughs> oh, I guess for our critters. I'm going to give you a silhouette of a critter. Okay. And you've got to give the animal, and hopefully the name. Ah, okay. so is this Critter Kitchen Critters or like? Yeah, real... okay, it's all right. Critter Kitchen Critters. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna give you like a silhouette of some my dog and you've got to figure it out. Okay. Um, so yeah, because I mean, you should, you named a lot of these. You a wrote the lore of a lot of these. Um, I wrote a lot of the lore. We basically, I mean, I don't know. My design strategy is always pun first. So if there's a way to shove a pun in there, uh, I usually did. Um, so. I know, I, I was, I was living for it. It was like my favorite thing during the entire thing was just writing puns the entire time. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I very much I actually was given a book on American idioms for Christmas because the amount of times I'd go, is this a thing that you have? <laughs> Cause they'd be like, we've never heard of that. And I'm like, let's not use that then. <laughs> One of my so, favorite games to play with me is he'll say a thing and he'll be like, is that an Australia thing or is that a US thing too? Uh, yeah, and he's got more British stuff than American when it comes to like spelling and like Celsius. That makes sense. Like, that. I, like, I don't know. I feel like 90% of our parlance in America is baseball references. <laughs> we have a lot of baseball references. Yeah. Um, cr what's the term that Peter uses where it's like, we're going to crod or crot? I don't know. It, it's like thinking something through, but it's like, sounds like it's Star Trek language, like crod. And I'm like, I don't know what this means. <laughs> And every now and again, it just says like we're gonna crod this out, and I'm like, <laughs> is it Brock? Um, I don't know. I can't remember what it is. I'm sure Brad will be like, "What are you talking about?" Um, okay, so I have officially ten critters. For you. Grok, it's Grok. Grok, what, whatever Grok is. <laughs> it's like when you understand something. I think like if you get it, you Grok it. Peter That's... Vaughn. Yeah, I heard that first from Peter Vaughn. He says that. It's like the opposite of the word because I don't know what that means. <laughs> you don't grok. I don't grok grok. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I'm I'm learning new sayings every now and again. I'm just doing a quick Google, going, "Uh huh, yeah, okay, now I understand what that means," um, which I'm sure is the same with my British idioms of you know whatever we say about scones. I don't know. Um, so I officially have 10, but I can only put five in at a time into the system. So we're just going to see what happens, really. Um, so the first one, who's that critter? That critter. Is, let's see if this works. <laughs> okay. Starting off easy. That's Alex the alpaca. He's got a nice little slice of bread hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everyone else can also join in. Um, maybe do it like, mm. a, a pregnant pause before I blurt it out. Yeah, which is, which is what... Um, there we go. I I could have just put can only I can only fit ten slides at a time onto this system that we're using, and um, 
I could have just not put the results, but then I was like, that seems a bit sad not to show Sandara's amazing art. <laughs> so I was like, nah, I'll just make it work. Um, but yeah, this is, is, is Alex named after you or just? It is, yeah. And do you like bread? Sure. Uh, not more than a normal person, but sure. <laughs> what is more than a normal, like, uh, I guess, I guess the parameters for me are, do you have um, tiger bread where you are? Yeah. Yeah. Do you when you get like a big crusty loaf, do you just eat the entire middle first? Ooh, that's a good question. Um you know, I actually like the crust, which uh is it's 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 a good relationship thing if one of you is like a eat the inside of the bread person and the other one's an eat the crust person. Like no wasted parts of the sandwich for me and my wife, yeah. That's very interesting. And it gives you curly hair. It's not true. That's rubbish. Um I when I went to LA when I was eighteen, um I visited the London not London, the New York Film Academy, which is in LA. I don't really understand why. Um, and I and I managed to sneak my way into the art, the art room for Fast and the Furious 4, 7, 10. I don't know which one it was. Um, and at the time they were all eating soup out of a bread roll, like it was in it. And I was just trying to understand how that, how at some point something's going to give. Sure. <laughs> you're, you're breaking the edge off. Yeah. Where's the soup going? <laughs> yeah, I would have assumed that was a, an international thing, right? Like, isn't that how they serve French onion soup, right? Like in a bread bowl. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's a very British soup. So, like, I mean, maybe, maybe in France. <laughs> sure. I, I don't know. I just meant, like, I didn't think it was just a U.S. thing. But what's, what I, is It was a trend, I think, at one point to have round loaves with soup inside. Um, what, what is the most British soup? Oh, like a leek and potato or something or a chicken and mushroom <laughs> is that like a like a hot pot i don't know <laughs> mulgatawny no <laughs> that's a good question i don't eat too much soup because it's full of gluten usually um but uh my favorite is is mushroom soup uh, it's a classic you know, but, um next one who's that critter <laughs> I need music. <laughs> All right. Are we waiting for, do we have to wait for a chat to think about? I mean, like people give it a go. If anyone knows a uh, fun fact about this one is that um, Grant from Grant Rex Games thinks this critter is potentially evil. Um, uh, does not like this critter at all. Uh, if you didn't see the live stream where we, I gave him instructions to draw them it went very badly uh then please do because it's very funny i think i cried with laughter so, um yeah feel 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 free to guess which one this is I, i'm 100 percent sure that it's a butterfly and i believe her name is marie yeah yeah i don't think there's anything malicious about that smile <laughs> i don't know what they're talking about we know sundara can draw things that look very scary. <laughs> this is not one of them. We, we need alternate art for some of these, just like an angry version. <laughs> just like, just change the eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, just have Sandara go through with like the eyebrows for everybody. I am now realizing that I did not place Marie on the surface of this background. They are flying. <laughs> some of them I was like, yeah, and this time I didn't. It's butterfree. It's not butterfree. <laughs> Chowder comes in a bread roll, doesn't it? Says Brad. I've never had chowder. Is that fish soup? Oh, uh, I'm, usually I hear it in the context of clam chowder. So yeah. the, we have white clam chowder and red clam chowder. So either New England or Manhattan, depending on which one. It's good. Chowder. I don't know anything about it. Like it's like a bisque. Yeah. Seafood bisque. It's like bisque. It's like a bisque. Um, this is what Brad says. She distracts you with the smile and then clocks you upside the head with the spatula upside the head i particularly like as a saying i, I was this is a sharp looking spatula it is it is very sharp um maybe it's just to get like yeah all of all the food yeah <laughs> the thing, you're not careful spatula um okay this one might be harder who knows who's that critter oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> This is actually a really good game because I forgot like some of these have stuff that they're holding or doing that's like really <laughs> a different thing. Uh, okay, I think I know this one. I'll give Chad a second. Yeah, see if anyone knows. 
Uh, fun fact, I wrote a poem about this one, which I do have if anyone wants me to read it out. I saved it just in case anyone wants to hear my little, little poem. She's got that customer service smile. There's a hidden resentment to people. <laughs> oh, no. So, That's not the yeah. customer service smile. This is. The tricky thing about this one is uh, there's a fruit bowl on her head, and this is Lenore the Raven. Yes, it is, which I, for a while, was going, this is Poe. And then I did check my sheet and went, no, it's not Poe. <laughs> it's Lenore. And uh, you all asked, so my poem goes as thus. <laughs> Once upon a pleasant day on the streets of Bistro Bay, a raven flew to the market with a keen eye to fill their basket. Small with strength for one, they can take it and be done. Or grab two items instead. Could be wine, cheese, bread. Could be anything, but for this deal you must draw two more and leave them for others to take forevermore. This is Lenore. <laughs> I wrote that four in the morning. <laughs> I just got an idea. I was like, I'm going to do an Edgar Allan, Sto Ed Edgar Allan Poe style thing. <laughs> no, that is perfect. Uh <laughs> Yeah. I forgot that it fully explained the rule as well. I, I feel like uh, I'll just I'll just go in the rule book. I think thank Raven's you, thank you for the favorite bird. I really like ravens. I do like ravens. They're very <laughs> smart, aren't they? I've seen videos of them like pulling up the inside of bins so that they can get. They put it under their claw. It's very very clever. For uh, for college or I guess uh, university, as you would say, I went to um, the University of Virginia, and uh, that's where Edgar Allan Poe went, and they kept his room as a museum, kind of, so you can go look in and see what it looked like back in the back in the day. Was he already famous the second he left there? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it was more probably like ten years later. Someone was like, "Man, this guy got pretty big. We should probably <laughs> make a room." <laughs> it might not even be his real room. I don't know. It's got that. like. A proper writing style, and I bet he was just a bum. <laughs> I love that. I just really like the Simpsons version, to be honest. That's like my favorite. Oh. <laughs> um, who's that critter? Oh, God. <laughs> I hope you're all keeping score at home. <laughs> I know the animal. I need to think of the name now. Ah. I, I do have a fun clue if you're really struggling because it's a kind of it's the name isn't really to do with the animal. Correct. Um, okay, so it's a Yorkie. Yes, um, and it's to do with the color of the beard. Um, <laughs> Brad's clue is just fig, <laughs> which is also relevant. Newton. Yes. Hey, what's how does that have to do with the color of the beard? Because it looks like a fig Newton. Oh. <laughs> I thought that's, that, again, I've never eaten one. Is is that what they look like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I thought they were like, just, it's like, uh, it's like a tan uh, oval with brown fig paste in it, kind of. But is, is it like a purpley paste? Maybe. I mean, a fig is kind of purple, I guess, yeah. I'm just going to trust Sandara on this, because I don't know. <laughs> Never These eat are, one. Things are, things are strange, <laughs> but I, I do love uh, I do love the pose with the the giant bowl of soup. It's great. The trees are fan. Also, gonna need a rather large net over that beard. To oh be yeah. Oh, actually, this is, this is like a random crossover, I guess. But it, he's English, so maybe you've heard of him. Are you familiar with the YouTube channel Beard Meets Food? No. <laughs> He's a competitive eater and he like travels around doing eating challenges. Um, and he's just, he's a skinny little guy. Like he'll, he'll just not eat for a day and then he'll like, you know, down like a 60 inch pizza or something. Uh, and so he's, he's that same kind of thing where he's got this massive beard um, and he'll have to like constantly be wiping him while he's eating. <laughs> it's kind of gross. You have to, you have to have the rights. You have to enjoy competitive eating. I, I actually don't. <laughs> like I, I actually do not enjoy watching people eat large amounts of food. Um, yeah, you would I've hate seen some videos crop up, yeah. and it's it's amazing, but also kind of terrifying. I think the only time I've ever seen it any time was I used to watch a, a YouTube couple called uh, Eat Your Kimchi, who were Canadians that moved to Korea and then Japan, uh, which is why they eat your kimchi and they became eat your eat your sushi, and they went to do some curry challenge, 
And when the rice arrived, they just zoomed in on the guy's face going, because ah, it was just a mount. He thought the curry was fine. And then this mountain of rice arrived. And it's just the funniest, like he knew instantly he was not going to do it. He was like, oh, no. <laughs> if I had to do something, it would definitely be sushi. I think sushi is probably the thing that I have the most bottomless stomach for. Yeah. yeah and also I feel like it's not enough when you get like sushi, you're like, oh. Yeah. Okay, I feel like I could eat a lot more of this than you're expecting me to have. Did, did they do all you can eat sushi in the UK? Yeah, we. I mean, I'm in London, so we've got like most cuisines yeah. here. But um, the only all you can eat I really went to was the conveyor belt yo sushi that we have. Oh yeah, yeah. they'd only put the like all you can eat on the rubbish dishes. Oh so no, what was going around the belt was like, oh, I don't want that. I want all the stuff that's on the menu, and that wasn't in it. So yeah, I um, I love sushi but if i go to a place where it's not all you can eat if i eat the amount that i want to eat it's usually like more than 50 dollars for like a yeah. person so uh, yeah I'll, I'll always opt for quantity over quality i guess which I know <laughs> yeah i've got some good sushi places here but i, I agree i'd probably go for the cheaper places and be fine <laughs> peter, peter vaughn when i went out to la for the critter kitchen launch peter vaughn took me to a really nice sushi place yeah very nice. I mean, he's having all the food now, isn't he? Yeah, he probably got some good sushi over there. Yeah. We we do have, I mean, I'm very lucky in London with all of the different things that we have. We are very good Indian. We are very good Thai. Um, although I think anyone from Birmingham would not agree on the Indian thing. They think they have it sorted. I'm sure that uh, Gib and Tessie will have some thoughts on this as they're not super far from there. Um, but it's like a thing. <laughs> they're like, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> um, but, you know, we have lots of different things. I, I love that I can have Thai and sushi and all these different things from everywhere. I'm slowly removing these pictures so that I can do the next five. Because you so far have got five out of five, which is very impressive. Oh, I have another. Wait, that's four. That's four. Let's do. Who's that critter? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I know it's you. <laughs> <laughs> It's not my name, though. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, I was almost said Rosie the Frog, but that's Lily, right? For Lily Pad? Yeah. It is Lily, indeed. Adorable. This was actually came about because I was doing a test live stream with Sundara before. Um, we did a couple of drawing things with her, one during Potion Con and one beforehand. And we were just doing a test for using StreamYard. And uh, I said, draw a frog. She was like, I can't draw frogs. And I was like, just give it a go. And so she drew this little, let me just do this. And I was like, that's great. And then she was like, it's not enough pom-poms though. <laughs> I did two more pom-poms. And I was like, and a tail. And I'm like, and a tail, why not? I think it's like a tadpole tail. Yeah, it's like a little axolotl thing going on. Yeah, like an axolotl tail. Um, and then it just became became the frog. But it started with, I can't draw frogs. And you're a fan like, of soup there too, it looks like, right? The pardon? Soup? Looks like that's soup there in your bowl. Yeah, I, I can't remember why i had soup or not i also don't know why i'm wearing brown i don't think i've ever worn brown in my life um as you can probably tell <laughs> but uh it's it's a it's a working you know it's a working frog it works hard yeah. um right let's add, add some more in would you have a a favorite critter other than your own it's <laughs> a good question i i appreciate the commitment to the joke that we had with joffrey or jeffrey i guess <laughs> The oh, Jeffrey, yeah. I was like, Joffrey? We have a Joffrey. Oh, I'm I'm concerned about it. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey with the G, yeah. Um, but the way his art goes up off uh, off the card, and then uh, it, I I don't think it's spoiling anything to say that his head will pop up somewhere in the rule book or something like that. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I showed it already in like a unboxing or something. Or, um, so yeah, it's it's very funny. I really like that. And it's I, when we were going through the the cookie cutters. We were like, it just can't. I just wrote, really sorry, no. <laughs> it's just too big. That's a long... It's a long cookie, yeah. That's a, that's a long boy. Let me see if I click this. Can, you can make your own Jeffrey at home with the uh, candy cane-shaped cookie cutter. <laughs> <laughs> I have been... Uh, let me add the next one. I have been finessing um, the recipe that we're going to be putting a, a critter cutter cookie recipe in with the cards so that people know how to do what we call sugar cookies i don't know if you call them anything else but we call them basically sugar cookies are you can they don't spread right so you yeah. can get like good shapes out of them 
Yeah. Um, so my partner's been enjoying the sudden influx of critter cookies that have been appearing. Um, I have I have the uh, the initial three. Um, yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, so excited to get the full set. Like it's, I just can't wait. Yeah, it's it's gonna be so pretty. Um, yeah, and there's so many different ones. So it's gonna be I've great. Heard this internally to the cardboard alchemy uh, communication channels we have, but for anyone watching, the cookie cutters are also really great if you have kids for. Um, making play-doh shapes or like kinetic sand um it's just like my my kid uh, you know just will sit there and like make stamps that look like the boar or the lizard yeah they they're used for lots of different things um you can just use them to for impressions uh if you don't want shaped cookies you want hearts you can just use them to make like a pattern and then cut out shapes so there's lots of different things you can do when i have them i'm going to make a lot of content about all the different things you can use them for um it's, it's maybe i'll be set some challenges and see if I can do some stuff. But you could even use them with pies and pastry and lots of stuff. So who's who's this critter? Yeah, so this this is the first one that I, I I know it's one of two things, and I'm pretty sure I know which one it is just from the silhouette. But I had it narrowed down to either Queenie the Bee or Marty the Fly. Mm, it's definitely think, one of those. <laughs> I think it's Marty the Fly. I think I it think is it's Marty the Fly. Oh, the I'm now going to add them in one at a time. So let's just like drum roll, please. <laughs> Um, oh, it was number six. That's what it was. Yeah, uh, which is the coolest, the coolest one in terms of um, one, no one wants a fly to yeah. be serving them food. Let's be honest. Um, but it, the fact that it's like multiple puns and <laughs> yeah, this, this was the uh, the most proud of ourselves we were from a pun perspective because it's a uh, you got the flying fly in your soup because it's a soup based rumor. You have fly on the wall because it's listening into rumors and then you have uh, Marty McFly from Back to the Future. So it's just that the, the triple crown of puns and we all uh you know gave ourselves a hearty pat on the back after we <laughs> And then I was writing up the little text that went underneath for the updates. We had little text underneath all the pictures and then we had a uh, little rules explainers and I was like great Scott there's a fly in my soup. <laughs> I, I particularly enjoy getting uh, pop culture references into anything I write, pretty much. It's just really funny. I recently did a video unboxing for Cozy Board Games, uh, unboxing the Princess Bride storybook adventure game, which is literally like a book that you play through the movie. And at the end, I think I said something like, um, board games is what brings us together. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean that movie is just just ready for that kind of uh, jokes, yeah. really. Yeah, it's it's such choose your own adventure. So it's like if 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 I know that you know, go to page seven. If you know that I know that you know, go to page. <laughs> there is a card that says inconceivable on it, it um, and you do get minis of all the main characters. So you do get a little. What is his name? I don't know his name. My Which... partner will know. He's got a T-shirt with his face on it, but. Sure. Someone, someone who knows the name of the guy that says inconceivable a lot, just, just put that in there. That'd be great. <laughs> Number seven. Who's that critter? Who's so big? I could only fit two question marks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll I'll give it a little bit for people to to chime in and chat. This is one of my favorites, and this will be a cookie. So it's going to be because I remember when we saw this. I was like, that's a beautiful shape. Like when when I'm thinking about shapes that work in food, you need it to be a big, not too many cutouts. You need it to be uh, solid, basically, because with Jeffrey so long and thin, it's just going to break. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, they might not, but in terms of transporting it and giving it to people, but this uh, is a big as you from the silhouette. This is clearly a two-headed alien, one of which is wearing a World War One pit helmet. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, this is Amanda the panda. Mandy the panda. Yeah, it's Mandy. Yeah. Mandy the panda. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Um I was I was afraid I was gonna go over ten, so I'm very proud of myself right now because <laughs> I have not looked at these ones in, in a few months now, so I was wondering if I should warn you, like should you no, look, this is just look at the <laughs> they, they, they fly or fall on my own own graces yeah 
So Mandy's actually standing on the surface there. Like that's positioned correctly rather than the one that was just hovering. Uh, but just beautiful, like the, the shapes and the patterns. Like so cute. Um, I love the little apron as well. Is that cheeses and oranges or is it watermelons? And I mean, who knows? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a cookie cutter. I'm pretty sure. Let's not take me as like gospel here because I'm, I think so. <laughs> uh, at least I wanted it. <laughs> that was for sure. Um, right. Uh, number eight. This one. Who's that critter? <laughs> I mean, this one's one of the, the like. Is it like this? Uh, I think it's just like a, like a. <laughs> I love it. All right, so that is uh, our resident fox, and I believe her name is Ginger. Yes, it is. Ta -da. It's like it's like, oh, come this way for vegetables and cheese. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Vizini. Vizini is the one who kept saying inconceivable. Thank you so much, Tony, for that. I will genuinely forget it immediately, but thank you. Because <laughs> it's not, my head just goes, it's the inconceivable guy. <laughs> um, did you see during lockdown that they remade the entire movie with various famous actors? Um, so you can watch like, like they also filmed it incrementally meaning that you'd have like jack black in his garden acting opposite someone in their garden and they just cut it together was it it's, good it's amazing oh wow okay it's so it's so like diy it's, yeah it's beautiful um thank you so much my head door. i hope i'm saying that right you have to give me like a little voice note so i know i'm saying it right um that was number eight you've got eight for eight doing very well I, I, like I wonder if the, the last two are really hard. That's the question. Oh, I can't remember. Nara put on, a, on her. Um, it's very nice. Bobble. Oh. oh, no. What have you done to me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on now. Oh, okay. I think I have it. it was, I got thrown out. The silhouette game is hard, honestly. Like Because the, whenever there's another bit in the scene, other than the body of the critter. Yeah. Yeah, because that looks. <laughs> if you just went by the silhouette, you'd be like a sphinx. I don't know. Yeah, it does look quite sphinxy. Um, and being that Sindara had to play around with the amount of limbs critters had, or, you know, it, it looks like uh, silhouette-wise, it looks like a cat with a top hat and a very, very large mustache. <laughs> <laughs> An unkempt mustache. <laughs> uh, I love it. That is Hootley the owl. Yeah. super cute also carrying a bag of fish which makes it even harder um but yeah so cute little glasses which i often get mixed up in my head with there's another one that wears glasses which is reading a book loves books oh yes um the uh finch atticus finch yes atticus finch because they they're they love <laughs> so there's glasses there's glasses clearly that's how my brain works um, but Alex, what are the names of the fish? Of the fish? Uh, <laughs> uh, Flippy and Floppy. Flippy and Floppy. That's official. That's canon. Yeah. They're not doing so hot right now, but yeah. Um, let's not go into that. <laughs> no, they're, they're tree grown fish. We, we, we have established the lore. They're just Swedish fish. Um, yeah. they're yeah. gummy. They're gummy fish. Yeah. Every, everything is gummy. In cricket. Oh, it's rough. Uh, when you think about the things that are being cooked. No, lunch and dinner. <laughs> That's flippy and floppy is certainly cuter than lunch and dinner. Um, First breakfast and second breakfast. That's, yeah. yeah, my partner literally lives like that. He's like Levensies, and I'm like, you're <laughs> such a for a six foot two man, you're a hobbit. And the final one is <sighs> is actually my favorite one. Yeah. Lily's kind of always my favorite, but yeah. yeah. Well, we have, we have to like our, our little avatar ones, but yeah, there's... Can't be biased, you know. This is the first one, I believe, that we had the fan's name. Um, and it was just such a good name. Like, the soon, like there were a lot of good options. And, and anytime, mm -hmm. the, you know, the fans were naming things, like, we got tons of good good choices to choose from. But this is one where, like, when that came in, we were like, yep, that's that's the one. Uh, 
this is our resident raccoon, Pocket. Pocket! Because they're pocketing. Oh, yeah. I have to like delete Lily so that I can add a 10 slide. Packing uh, it away. Hope you're all enjoying the tech. <laughs> this is why this is why Peter has me in the back end <laughs> doing stuff. <laughs> because of this. Or the, the drum roll for Pocket. There we go. That's all right. Pocket's just decided not to appear, which is great. So you can all imagine Pocket. I'll use his Pocket is whatever you want him to be. Pocket's whatever you want it to be. Um, but yeah, it just, I've just got a dot on the on there. So anyway, um, but yeah, Pocket, uh, it's quite interesting, actually, because eventually my surname will be Pocket. So it's quite amusing. Oh. I'm going to be combining my surname with my partner's surname, um, which becomes Pocket, which is uh, so Rosie Pocket, which I think sounds like. That's a very there. cozy. It's very cozy. There we go. Hey. <laughs> I got there in the end. It still doesn't show on my end, but I, it's there. Um, but yeah, super cute. And I think we also changed the name because it was originally Kit. And then um, Kim Joy has a critter and we went with Kit Joy. Yes. Because uh, she loves cats and she's a big, beautiful pink cat holding a cat themed dessert and so we decided to change this to avoid confusion and uh, i think i prefer pocket personally but... yeah no it's great it's fantastic i remember when kim joy was uh we, we gave her a few choices of like what do you want your animal to be and the one i was pushing for was uh kim koi like a koi fish yeah <laughs> i don't know if it was kim joy didn't like it as much as kit joy or if it was sandara did not want to draw a koi fish <laughs> oh i think it was me going i think she wants to be a cat and we gave her the options she chose cats. probably the right call everyone got what they wanted in the end <laughs> Have you do you want to be a giant fish that's the question we should ask everyone who works with us would you like to be a giant colorful fish <laughs> have you seen those videos of raccoons eating uh cotton candy yes so i have they go um, to for anyone who was watching at home, they they go to they like to wash their food before they eat it. But if they're holding cotton candy, it just dissolves into nothing right away. So the raccoons just like take it, they put it in the water, and then it disappears, and they just get very sad and confused. So I can watch it, and I I kept showing it to my partner, and he was like, "You have to stop. I cannot watch this anymore. It is too sad. Like it's too sad. It's not funny." Just the camera turned off. They took them away from the water and just let them eat some. I don't know. I mean, I, I I assume it's incredibly bad for animals to be eating cotton candy. Humans included, but... <laughs> Any kind of living creature should probably not eat just balls animal. of sun sugar. Probably raccoons. I feel like they've got... They're the iron stomachs of the animal kingdom. Do they have a... I mean, I thought that was platypuses or naked goats. mole rats, but... Goats, goats can eat, like, uh, cans, right? And, like, metal. <laughs> They're fine. They're metal. <laughs> rocks yeah. they're, they're, what can they do they're in like trees and cliffs they gotta do something about it yeah. um but yeah so you got 10 out of 10 well done uh people at home hopefully you uh had fun if we're looking at who's that critter and if you enjoyed it i can do more of those just i can just post them just for yeah. fun um and i'll have the background and i have all of the critters in silhouette form because lauren yeah. was like here's all of them pick 10 <laughs> i was like Okay. You gotta throw in some tricky, like fake ones, like just throw in like a Pokemon for every six, sixth one. <laughs> oh my goodness! Just a Bulbasaur, just like yeah, or, or take two Critter Kitchen critters and like overlap them to make a silhouette, yeah. Yeah. which occasionally happened when I was putting it in Photoshop. I was like, oh no, that's not real. Um, or just just do a silhouette of uh, like your head, Peter's head, just like you could just be in poses with wings on. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't. It was. It was not. It was the designer all along. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's funny, we were talking about the, um, like, I have Alex the alpaca and Peter has Peter the parrot, but we also, our, our actual avatars are on the box cover. Um, yes, yes, so I, they are. Uh, they are. You want to point yourself out? I think you're. I'm the far left. Um, that's that's blue Peter. Yeah, kangaroo with the blue beard, and I'm on the far other side. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yep. A yellow it's sign. Kind of blue as well. <laughs> you're you're both blue. It's very cool. Did you choose your clothes or did Sarah choose Sandara choose them? I did. I sent her a picture. I have a leather jacket I wear sometimes, and I like to wear yellow sunglasses. Um, which like I, I I'm not like super into the color coordination, but I like to wear like I have this hoodie in like yellow, blue, and red, and so I'll wear this with either yellow, blue, or red sunglasses sometimes. So 
I like that you're kind of like looking at each other across the game. Yeah. This is kind of cool. But yeah. Um, oh, it's, 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 this is the prototype. So it's just <laughs> so full of, uh, now at times I've opened it up to grab things. Uh, it's, it's not organized anymore. Um, so yes, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I impressed myself with my critter guessing skills. Yay. Um, I bet, I bet Peter C. Hayward's like, I can do that. <laughs> just don't ask me, um, who's who in love letter with their powers. <laughs> That was the one he got really miffed about. Um, was that I gave him uh, the power and said which which of the love letter characters has this power, and he just he just didn't get it. He was like the he came up with a completely different character. I haven't seen his episode yet. Can you ask me the question? Because if I get it, that's like <gasps> bragging rights. Oh, um, oh yes. One moment. <laughs> it's right here. See if you get it. I always have love letter to hand. Yeah, that's a great game. Uh, if you discard this card, you're out of the round. I mean, that's that's the shortened one. There's like a longer rule. But... Is it the princess? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Peter. <laughs> he he was like the the. He, I don't know. The, he came up with some like the courtesan. <laughs> I was like the courtesan. <laughs> um but yeah um and then and then the last question was what's my favorite board game and uh he would rather lose the point than admit that my favorite board game is railroad inc so he really he really does they all came up with horrible answers for me they were like black orchid or something and i'm like <laughs> so we got he got 14 out of 20 but he should have got 15 if he just admitted to himself that i like that game but yes um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Um, and uh, yeah, um, comment in the comments how many you got right if you joined in or what your favorite critter is. We, we love it when people comment on our videos. That's nice. <laughs> and uh, if you if you haven't seen that the late pledge is open for Critter Kitchen, um, then definitely go have a look. It's pretty much your only last chance to get the uh, deluxe, everything, all beautiful version. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. And um, we will be back next week. I'm not sure who with yet, because I I don't know exactly, but there will be someone. <laughs> and it's either one of, it's either very exciting or very exciting. So just come back and join that. Um, but yeah, thanks so much everyone for joining. Thank you, Alex. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the expansity poster on your wall. That's genius. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just going to shout out my wife real quick because this was like the greatest gift I've ever gotten. This was, um, it's Legos. It's it's the little single bricks and it we it's a puzzle. So she sent the image into this company and they sent back like 16 little boards that each have like a puzzle key of like where the colors go and you just put them in and then you hang it up. Super cool. So it's like that gem art, but not gem art. Yeah, it's like gem art, but with Legos. Yeah, I mean, it's like off-brand Legos, but yeah. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. That's awesome. And you call it Legos. That's just fascinating. Uh, it's just it's just Lego. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're right. <laughs> I am right. <laughs> you are percent right. But... Um, well, no, these are the off-brand ones, so they're Legos. <laughs> that's true. That yeah, and that's like, that's really cool. I have a, a another like mine is a. Uh, this is uh, an official like dark crystal poster Ooh. from when the movie was released. You can still see the creases in it because it was folded up by the movie post basically did it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, puppets. What can I say? Um, <laughs> all right, thanks very much everyone. And uh, we will, we'll be back. We'll be back. Have a great weekend. <laughs>